we're going to get started here. Um, if at any point during the presentation you're unable to hear us, um, just start waving your hands uh, dramatically <laughs> and we will uh, yeah. pause and try to deal with the technical um, difficulties. Uh, just for your information, uh, my name is Brian McAdee. I'm the manager of academic advising here at SICE Washington. This is a presentation about the uh, exchange, the semester exchange program with the uh, Hertz School of Governance in Berlin, Germany. Uh, Isabel uh, Nagel is here to join us. Uh, she is um, from the Hertz School and she'll be presenting a little bit more about uh, the school, about studying in Berlin, some of the exciting opportunities that you have um, to participate uh, there. After she wraps up, I'll just go over some of the general mechanics about applying to the uh, exchange deadlines you need to be aware of. Uh, and uh, together we'll answer any questions that you might have. But for now, I will uh, keep it over to Isabel. Yeah, uh, thank you, um, um, Brian, for like hosting the session today. Very happy to be here, um, also because of the exchange with size being a fairly new one. Uh, always exciting for us as well. Um, yeah, and also a hello to everyone over there in Bologna. Uh, I imagine it's, <laughs> what, what time is it there now? Like late, late, late afternoon or something? Uh, a little after five. A little after five, okay, so a little bit later than here. Um, yeah, um, my name is, uh, like Brian already said, Isabel. Um, I work actually normally in the student recruitment and admissions department, um, but today I will be speaking on behalf of my colleagues at the study abroad office. Um, so yeah, I will, I have a presentation here. I'm not quite sure how that will work um, with the, with the um, live stream, but I will just try to talk as much as possible uh, about what's on the slides and if you have any questions feel free to just um, yeah um, post some questions afterwards or while I'm talking even maybe like raise your hands and I'll try to like have a look over there as well okay so maybe I'll just put it like this and yeah I mean I don't think this, I don't think you can see it from here uh, <laughs> all right um, so the Hurdy School is a fairly young school, as I'm sure all of you are aware. Uh, it was founded in 2003. Um, we've been offering master's programs since 2005. Um, the MPP, the Master of Public Policy, was our first program. And um, we were awarded the right to award doctorate degrees in 2012. We've been non-existent for over 10 years. And our newest program, or youngest program, I should say, is the Master of International Affairs, which we've, we've been offering since 2015. So it's a fairly young program, but the school itself has been, uh, yeah, a little bit, we're approaching like the 15 year mark now this, this year. Yeah, um, our students come from all sorts of, of academic backgrounds. The majority of our students coming from the social sciences, but we have students from the fields of business and economics, um, humanities, law, and every once in a while also science and engineering. Doesn't have happen quite that often, but it does happen. Um, yeah, and really, we we're also like a very international school. Um, our students um, come from over 50 different nationalities, 50, di 50 different countries. Um, we have like a rough, pers like a roughly about like, these numbers are a little bit old. I would say like 35% German students. The rest really come from all over the world. Uh, from North America, we have around like 13 to 15% at this point. Um, from Latin America, 15%, from other European countries, 17%, uh, from Asia, 12%, Africa and uh, Oceania, unfortunately, only 2%. But we also have a partnership with the DRD where we are trying to work on that. Um, yeah, but this it's really like students from all over the world at the Hurdy School, which I think is also something that's really exciting about the classroom debates and about um, the sort of community you find at the school. Yeah, our global partner network, I don't think I have to um, go through the whole list. Obviously, SIZE is one of, one of our newer, newer partners, but we also uh, have a lot of um, partnerships and research activities um, with the big policy schools in Europe, like the LSE, Sciences Po, um, in Italy also with Bocconi, um, and yeah, and, and plenty of exchange partners in the US, Asia, um, and Latin America as well. Yeah, um, if you should choose to go to Hurdy for your, for your uh, exchange semester, which would be in the third semester as, as far as I'm uh, aware, um, you will have the chance to choose up to four electives, uh, either from the MPP or MIA program. Uh, and since it's electives, there's really like a broad choice. You can really tailor um, yeah, you, the electives that you take in, uh, according to your interest, maybe also like the, the course requirements you have here, which is obviously something you would need to check also uh, with size. Um, yeah, he, I have some examples here. For example, in, in, the, in the MPP, we have a concentration called policy analysis. 
um, where we have more quantitative courses such as um, data management with R, economics of crime and security, open government data. Um, another concentration um, uh, in, the, in the MVP is management and organization where we have courses such as corruption as policy failure, gender diversity and conflict, basically everything around the like broader notion of public management, organizational sociology, um, and, and the like. Uh, in the MIA, our concentrations are finance and trade, so you find a lot of um, transnational risk governments, uh, courses, uh, fair trade, the Eurozone and its financial system, everything along those lines. Um, security and sustainability is uh, the other concentration. It's based on a more holistic no notion of security, so everything related to, to security, um, for example, two courses here are the politics of terrorism, European migration and refugee policies, but also more overarching themes such as like climate change and conflict, um, um, also um, um, cyber warfare, things like that. Um, if you go to our website, for example, you can find a, a whole bunch of more examples for these electives. Um, on our website, um, I have it prepared here. Um, if you just go to uh, herty-school.org, there's like a study section, click on course catalog, and then you can basically you find um, the majority of the courses that are offered regularly, and you can like filter by policy area, by type of course, so you could filter by elective, and you can find out like a lot more, like have a look at the course, uh, courses that are regularly offered. Of course, there's always like no guarantee that that particular course will be offered in that semester that you're applying, um, but in general, these are courses that are offered on a regular basis, so there's at least a pretty pretty good chance that it will be offered that um, semester. Yeah. Um, going back to the presentation. Yeah, uh, on top of the concentration electives, you are also free to choose from the so-called, uh, oops, now we're back at the beginning. Um, the con the por por portfolio electives, which are elective, like free electives, so to speak, who don't belong to any uh, specific concentration. So there's even more choice, um, courses on political communication, courses on, um, some examples are here are Russian foreign policy, um, crisis diplomacy, um, new media, democracy and stability. So there's really like a wide array of courses that are offered. Sometimes also courses like on, on urban politics, um, social policy as a lot. Um, so yeah, that's really like, again, a whole um, wide array of courses to choose from. Yeah, and while you're a student at Herdy, you will uh, also be, of course, supported. We have uh, a quite big, um, um, yeah, staff uh, and, and, and team. Uh, you will your predominant point of contact will be my colleagues at Study Abroad and, and Student Affairs, uh, who will provide pre-departure orientation. Will be and can uh, basically advise in all things regarding visa, housing, health insurance, all these things. Um, registration and immigration service. Uh, there there's a buddy program for incoming exchange and dual degree students. Uh, we offer also German language courses, which are which are subsidized. Um, so they're not completely free, but they're heavily subsidized. As um, so, I think I'm I'm not quite sure how many uh, courses there are, but it's yeah, they are offered also during the semester and also during orientation week. So there's also a chance to pick up some German if you're interested. Um, curricular advice, of course, our curricular affairs uh, department has also um, is always has an open door for you, and then our career service department as well. Um, so, if any questions regarding maybe like doing an internship or something in Berlin or just um, anything in general, yes, that's yeah. Our uh, alumni here. I now have a graph showing the career path of our alumni. Our alumni uh, go on to many different careers. Um, uh, a lot at the intersection of the three sectors, so um, the private sector, a lot, of, lot um, a lot of them go into like consulting, for example, like public sector consulting, for example, public administration, of course, is the second biggest field, uh, ministries in, in Germany and beyond. Um, uh, here, actually, I was here in DC yesterday at an alumni event of our like um, alumni chapter here in DC, so a lot of people also work in international organizations or on the Hill, um, private sector as well here, research and think tanks. Um, yeah, and then the, the third biggest field is international organizations. Uh, our biggest employer is actually, if you take all of our alumni, um, the German uh, Development Agency. So a lot of people also go into development. Um, then NGOs and foundations, um, Save the Children, um, some other examples, you teach first. 
uh, research and think tanks, of course, is another big field, and then a few, I think it's like five or six percent, go into academia and um, pursue a doctoral program after their studies. Yeah, um, at the Hurdy School we have a lot of um, events, which a lot of our students also take advantage of. Um, I think during the semester we have between two or three public events uh, every week. They're all um, uh, held in, in English usually. There's like one series that's being held in German because it's pub uh, um, uh, published on, on, on German radio as well. So that's the only reason it's in German, but the others are all in English. Um, like two years ago now, for example, like um, Emmanuel Macron also visited the school during his campaign. Um, uh, Angela Merkel has been there, um, so I mean there are like some also like some big names stopping by occasionally. But I mean also like from the field of academia and like decision makers from the public policy sphere, uh, you find them quite often at like um, public um, panels or like um, academic um, workshops. So I mean there's like really a lot of chance for you to like get a uh, get in touch with um, deciders and um, thinkers from public policy sphere and international affairs, of course, as well. Um, yeah, we're um, if you've ever been to Berlin, uh, we're located right in the heart of Berlin, so to speak, uh, at Friedrichstraße, so right uh, pretty close to the Bundestag and other um, um, yeah important German public policy institutions, uh, ministries, um, right in the gist of it all. Um, yeah, and it also means no matter where you live in Berlin, you will probably have a pretty easy way getting there because it's pretty central. Um, and the public transportation in, in Berlin is quite amazing, so um, it really shouldn't be much of an issue. Yeah, um, living in Berlin, I now have some fun pictures from uh, Berlin student life. Um, Berlin is a very um, young city, uh, I, I'm sure, I mean, how many of you uh, in Bologna have been to Berlin before? Okay, so almost, <laughs> so almost everyone. So I don't need to, need to go into much detail, but I mean the obvious the obvious uh, advantages of Berlin is it's a it's a very affordable city. It's a young city. It's a very um, the, the, there is something to do for everyone basically. Um, it's, it's it's very diverse, um, and yeah, um, if you, uh, it's a great city also in terms of the life outside of the classroom. Yeah, in terms of uh, living expenses, I mean, of course, this depends also on your personal lifestyle, I would, uh, I would imagine. Um, but we usually say monthly living expenses, you should uh, calculate between $1,000 uh, and $1,300 per month. Rent is uh, uh, around 650 euro. Uh, of course, they can be lower, they can be much, much more expensive, it depends on um, like what kind of uh, like living uh, living arrangement you, you you're looking for? Most people share apartments, the so-called WG in, in in German. Um, and although prices have been going up in recent years, definitely since I moved to Berlin, they have been really on the rise. Um, but comparatively, especially compared to other European capitals and other big policy hubs, it's still um, fairly affordable. Yeah. Um, Student life at the Hurdy School, there are a lot of um, initiatives and clubs and things going on. We have a lot of, um, here's some pictures of some events, um, we like a pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin carving event last year, there's the foosball uh, tournament. And actually, hi. hi, someone is just joining us uh, who is actually a, a Hurdy student, if I'm not mistaken, are you Timo? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have any questions, uh, a, a real hurdy student can answer them for you as well. Sorry, sorry for being late. <laughs> no, thank you for joining us. I mean, it's it's fairly early, uh, and you guys are all busy. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Um, I mean, there are a lot of student clubs. Um, there are uh, there are it's the governance post, which is quite big, like a student newspaper. Um, there's a hurdy run. There's international relations club. Uh, I mean, so, so it's a very active community also with things you can do on campus and off campus and a lot of people um, yeah, also, spe also spend a lot of t their free time in, the, in those communities and those clubs and um, yeah. Yeah, at the application process, I'm sure Brian will also say a few words regarding that, but basically after you have been, uh, you applied to your home university um, you ha and you have been nominated by your home university, you will also need to upload some documents to our application portal it's pretty straightforward, just a CV, a bit of motivation. And if you're not a native uh, speaker of English, a um, uh, language test, so it's the, it's the standard ones like TOEFL or IELTS. 
Um, but if, if you have any more questions regarding that, I can also go more detail. Um, yeah, but that was it for now. Um, thank you so much for 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 um, yeah for listening. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And I'm sure Timo will also have the inside scoop from the <laughs> from the student live. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So just just a few notes on the sort of internal SICE application process uh, and related to the policy uh, for exchange students. So students who participate in the semester exchange earn 16 credits of advanced standing. Uh, those credits of advanced standing uh, typically count in the place of electives as your degree. The courses you take at Hurdy don't fulfill specific SICE requirements. Uh, meaning that you'll still need to fulfill your econ, quantitative reasoning, concentration requirements, core requirements with your SICE coursework in the three semesters that you're here. Um, this requires a little bit of planning on your part to make sure that the courses that you're taking this semester, next semester, and then in the spring semester after you return from the exchange uh, fulfill those requirements. Our office would be happy to sit down and talk with you about <coughs> structuring your classwork to make sure that you can uh, have enough room in your program to participate in the exchange uh, and that doing so uh, will still allow you to fulfill your size requirements. The nice thing about this is that, as, as Isabel mentioned, um, this means that the courses you take at Hurdy can be much more expansive maybe than some of the courses that you would consider here at SICE. Uh, we really want you to take advantage of all of the different offerings that they have, uh, courses that are unique to that school uh, that maybe you wouldn't get at SICE. And we'll work with you uh, when you're uh, recommended for the exchange on developing a course schedule that's going to be um, really beneficial to you, uh, that can be really expansive and really make sure that, um, <clears throat> that you're getting the most out of the experience. A few notes on the application process. The, app, the SICE internal application will go live in December. Uh, we'll make that available uh, to you. It's an online application. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. We're just looking for a few things uh, from you. One thing that we'll need is we'll just need your grades at the end of the fall semester. Uh, we'd like to see a CV, uh, and we would like to see uh, probably what the most important uh, piece from you is a, um, a your statement of motivation. You know why it is you wish to participate in the exchange. Why doing so would advance your sort of personal, professional, academic. Um, goals. It's just a one-page uh, statement for us to learn a little bit more about you and why you might be a good fit for this process. Uh, we'll also ask for some support from your academic program uh, just to make sure that they uh, you know, would support your participating in the exchange. That's a fairly straightforward process and just to also have them review what courses you've completed, what your spring semester schedule would be to make sure that participating in the exchange wouldn't set you back uh, in fulfilling your, your SICE requirements. Um, so our goal is to make this as, as fairly straightforward um, as, as possible. Um, we, this is our only our second year with the Hurdy Exchange. Uh, we can send up to two students in the fall 2019 semester. We are very interested in sending two students uh, in the fall semester, so I would encourage you to um, submit an application. Um, we, uh, you know, we're very excited about this partnership and we want to make sure that um, you know, that, can, that it can continue to, to thrive. So at this point, I'm going to uh, stop talking and let you guys ask any questions that you might have, either to me, uh, Timo, uh, who is here on an exchange from Herti uh, this semester, or, or Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, guys? <laughs> I do have a question. Can we also uh, have the study of our program in the spring of next year, or is it only in the fall? Unfortunately, it's only in the fall semester. Letters of reference. So, um, so there was a question here about whether or not you need letters of reference. You don't need letters of reference. Um, all we want is we just want a simple sort of review from your academic program to verify that you're on track to complete complete requirements. Okay. But it's not uh, necessary to have a letter of recommendation. Thank you. So I actually have a class in like two minutes, but thank you so much for the information. Thank you. <laughs> I'll follow up with Rachel for the uh, the slides. Yes. So um, if, if you all could just um, send me, um, if, I'll, I'll email to Luigi uh, the slides and ask him to distribute those and put them up on the VC web. Um, we're also making a video recording of this session that we'll also post available. So if you have any colleagues who are unable to make it today uh, to this session, we will 
um, have a recording available for them. Uh, I am the primary point of contact for all the exchange programs, so if you have any questions about um, anything related to the exchange application, please feel free to email me at siceadvising at jhu.edu, uh, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible on that. Um, so from students who have done the exchange in the past, I guess it was one year prior, um, what, have you heard kind of what their reaction was, like, you know, how much they thought it was beneficial to, you know, their studies and, you know, or whether they, you know, had any difficulties um, with the exchange program? So we haven't sent any students to Hertie previously. Um, so so I, can't speak, I can't speak generally to their experience in Berlin, um, but what I can say is that um, for students who participate in the exchange, the ones who really find it to be mostly beneficial are the students who are looking to broaden their overall educational experience. Um, they, uh, you know, who really want some kind of additional exposure. The, the best part about an exchange is that it really does expand your network um, and it expands your sort of perspective on, on education. So the students who are looking in, and sort of by studying in Berlin, it gives you kind of a unique experience that you're not able to get in uh, DC or in Bologna. Um, so f I think the students who most benefit from the exchanges are those who are looking to um, really kind of expand, really sort of expand sort of perspective on, uh, you know, as part of their, part of their masters. Um, there is trade-offs. I mean, by not being at SAIS in a fall semester, it, um, you miss out on some of the courses that are only offered in fall. Um, so that can sometimes be a downside. And likewise, um, by having to fit all of your requirements within three semesters, um, you know, sometimes it does take away the room that you would have to pursue a minor or a specialization or to take some key electives. So those are the trade-offs, but I would say for the most part, the students who participated in exchanges um, you know, have been really happy to make those, make those trade-offs because of the larger goal of sort of getting that additional experience. Maybe I can add to that a bit. So, um, from from a student perspective, um, with regard to the curriculum, it's like as as size uh, doesn't count the classes to the concentration. The the major focus, I would argue, in the, in an exchange semester is to broaden your focus academically as well. That you can take classes which are not part of your um, usual curriculum that are beyond the scope of the of the program that you're taking. Because that's what I'm doing right here uh, at size right now, and I'm very happy with it. So I take classes in history and psychology. In, uh, in econ, which I would not be doing uh, at my home institution because I'm bound by requirements, because I, I have to fulfill my concentration requirements. Uh, other than that, uh, Brian already mentioned the networking aspect. Uh, Berlin is one of the political hubs in, in Europe, one of the central ones, I would argue, together with Paris and London. So um, having a network in Berlin will, will largely benefit you. Of course, you, your, your opportunity cost, if you will, is not spending time in DC. So uh, you have to be aware that um, being in Berlin at that time will broaden your European network or your network in maybe international organizations will focus in development in Europe or uh, German development agencies, etc. cetera. But um, at, at the same time, you will miss the opportunity of having four more months or five more months in DC and expand your network there. Um, still, I would make the, 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 the pitch that um, spending the time in Berlin um, will benefit you uh, especially with regard to cultural experience, with regard to uh, being able to expose yourself to many cultural influences uh, in a short, like very small area, because in Europe it's so easy to, to cross countries and, and just get around a lot and meet different people and, get in, and learn new languages. And uh, you don't get that opportunity in DC, and not as much. Okay. <laughs> if that's it, um, thank you all so much uh, for, for coming. Um, like I said, please feel free to email me if you have any particular questions. Um, we had a late arrival, but I guess I guess he's good. So. <laughs> Likewise, um, what I will do what what I will do is I will um, uh, email uh, Isabel's contact information as well. Um, and, and Timo's uh, contact information as well. So if you have any additional questions, um, you know about Hurdy specific um, things, I'm sure they'll be happy to happy to answer them for you. But otherwise, I don't want to stand. Yeah, I mean, oh yes. <laughs> One last question. Sorry, uh, I'm actually.
actually from Germany. Yeah. Um, I actually grew up in Berlin as well. And so, <laughs> oh, okay. whether, I mean, whether, whether, the, whether the aim of the exchange is to draw rather non-Germans to Haiti, or is this like, is there no consideration uh, of that sort? The aim of the exchange is to send size students to Haiti, so we do not, um, we do not, um, Put, obviously, nationality and your previous experience within Germany will sort of shape your um, your statement, but in sort of your motivation for for attending. But uh, with all of our exchange programs, we don't consider nationality as a as a driving factor as to whether or not we can or, or can't send students to the exchange. Our goal is to send students on the exchange who are going to most benefit from the experience and who have positively expressed sort of a strong. Uh, academic and professional rationale for wanting to participate. Uh, to participate. Okay. Because I just asked, um, because I know from my college, for example, that uh, there are some some um, camps, for example, on uh, U.S. citizens cannot go for exchange to U.S. institutions or something like this. That's why, uh, in order to make sure, I just want to. Ask. Yeah, we don't have any. We don't have any stipulation like that in our in our. Uh, okay. Agreement. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I don't mean to stand between you and your aperitivo or your class, so, um, <laughs> so thank you all so much for coming, uh, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.